about halfway back um, from the RV point and Jack tells me to come back around because um, he thinks he's broken his vehicle. So let's go find out. So I'm traveling down to Kalgoorlie today. I'm in the extremely quiet Ford Ranger. It's mum and dad's car. Taking it down because it needs its 5,000K checkup, but I'm also going to be able to bring back a new windscreen for the Volvo truck, the one that we use for mustering. I'm going down to Kalgoorlie because tomorrow I'm going to be flying out to Perth and then on to Canberra. I'm going over to Canberra on Shire Business. I'm a Shire councillor for Laverton, which is one of my nearest towns. And I like being involved in the council because you get to represent the whole community and you're involved in making sure that the objectives align with what the community needs and desires are. So Laverton is a small community that is suffering at the moment from a couple of issues. So part of what our trip over there is to do is to present a business case to the federal government, to the Prime Minister, to make sure that Laverton can become a centre of excellence for training and development on the lands. Another part of what we're over there for is to present an update about the Outback Way, which is another, which is kind of a project title for the Great Central Highway, which is the road that connects Laverton through to Winton in Queensland and it's known as the world's longest shortcut. While I'm over in Canberra, I've been asked to attend the launch of the First Nations Landcare Working Group for Landcare Australia. And that's an event that's gonna be at Parliament House. And that's pretty awesome to be able to be going to that. And that is because of the work in partnership with the MBN Co. So there's a lot of exciting work happening there. flooded in, uh, all the roads have been closed. So Jack, who's coming back from Canberra, where he caught up with the PM, as you do, uh, he couldn't get he couldn't get back to Prenti, so he went down to the other property down in Esperance, which is about a thousand kilometres to the south, and held up there for a couple of days. And we've got a window now where um, the roads have dried out a bit and uh, he's made a run up from Esperance so we're taking two vehicles down to get uh, Tim and Louise, they're leaving and um, so I'm following them in 
case they get bogged. And then Jack coming up from Aspen, so I'll follow him back in in case he gets bogged. So we'll see how we go. Um, road looks pretty good so far. But this is this is definitely a land of extremes. It's uh, it's either stifling hot in the 40s or it's uh, flood, you know, heavy rain. So it's amazing country. Anyhow, we got a window, and we'll see if we can uh, get. Tim and Louise out and get Jack in because tomorrow um, there's another 60 mil of rain coming through over the next few days so it's now or never and uh, hopefully we can uh, get everyone out in that we need. Jack. This is good. <laughs> he finally returns, the prodigal son. So now we're just exchanging some necessary items. Hang on, hang on, what have we got down here? Hello, who are you? Oh, Glenn Livett, do you mind? Yeah, thanks, Ant. It's uh, been fun. Probably don't have COVID. <laughs> it's good to know. Um, so, you met with the PM what day? Last Monday. Wednesday. Wednesday. And what day is it yep. today? Uh, today is Saturday. No. Sunday. Correct. <laughs> Too many beers. <laughs> wave, wave off. <laughs> right. Right. <sighs> so, so, what? Why the hold up? Uh, so I was in Kalgoorlie. I was ready to uh, head back to Prenti. I'd picked up the windscreen for the truck and I picked up the cat for the girls. And then I got a phone call saying, you can't make it home because we've had 60 mils of rain. So made the quick decision to, instead of turning north back to home, I went south towards Esperance. So then we've waited for the weather to clear and we saw a window and uh, here you are. So then what are we expecting now? We'll get a clear run home and then what do we expect over the next few days? Well, look, it is a small window. Um, we've only got these two days really. Uh, so today's the 2nd of April and on the 3rd and 4th, we're expecting somewhere between 60 and 70 mils of rain. So that'll hold things up and it's gonna be in this area to the south because we're about 100 and 80k south of Prenti. So in fact, not that far from where we had an issue with the truck. <laughs> so it's, a, it's our spot. Jack. It is. It's a special in spot. In fact, Jack. In fact, it's funny you say that because this does look very <laughs> familiar to me. Very familiar. It's only a few k's down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, mate. So we're going to head back. You haven't seen the the wife and kids for for a while, so we're going to head back up and go from there. Yep, we've got our two vehicles in case one of us gets stuck, so we can make it home.
about halfway back um, from the RV point and Jack tells me to come back around because um, he thinks he's broken his vehicle. So let's go find out. Hello, Jack. Hello, Ant. Okay. This is never a good sign when I see two feet hanging out the bottom of a vehicle. Yeah. The bonnet's up and, and there's no motor running. If you pass me the camera, I can show everyone. Okay, the, okay, the, okay. The here we go. Here. here we go. There you go. Yep. And that way is looking upwards now. There you go. All right, so what we have here is something that shouldn't have uh, been broken, which is broken. You can see that's sheared off, shorn off. Um, you can hear the hissing from all the water and everything. What um, is that, Jack? The gearbox. The gearbox? Yeah. Jack, how old is this car? Uh, she's 1980 something. Well, I can tell you that it's the same age as your eldest brother. So, so 1985. Okay. Yeah. So 1985, about 38 years old. Yeah, but this gearbox is only uh, like a year old. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Is it under warranty? No, won't won't be warranty on that. So, Jack um, has also bought back on his trip, because um, the three girls, they used to have a cat, but um, let's just say the cat had an accident and the girls weren't too happy about the accident. And so Jack's bringing them back a surprise, which is a new cat. So let's go have a look. Now, the old cat was called Rannick and the girls will name the new cat. So let's just go around and say good day. So if you can see in here, I'll show you. Hello, puss. Hello, puss. What's your name? Oh, it's happy. It's purring. You're not going to be purring for much longer, mate, because your car doesn't work. Right. All right. Well. Another day in paradise. Another day, another breakdown. So I'm back here at Dino. I'm just gonna crawl underneath, disconnect the drive shaft, drop that out, and then put my little rigid bar between the two vehicles. So time to crawl back under and sort of realize that nothing has changed. But what I've got to do is just unbolt there and at the back there. That's that out of the way. So now we just need to get her geared up for towing. We can have a little bit more of a look at the, the damage we've got here. That is completely seized up. There is no movement there. So that's Dino Jerry rigged onto the back of Bruiser here, ready for its final part of this little rescue mission of getting it back home. So just going to take it nice and steady. I've still got a bit of water to go through. So I'll take it steady through that, but it's not really going to be much of an issue. Rightio, so we're, we're heading off on the last part of our, um, what are we heading off on? This is where, okay, so when we were ferrying people back and forward with the floods. Hang on. Right. So, yeah. So when we are ferrying people back and forward with the floods, um, Dino, the other land cruiser, um, the gearbox got broken. So we had to leave it there. And that was before Easter. So now we're two weeks after Easter, we're just going to go pick up Dino. Say hello, Pong. G'day. G'day. There you go. It's taken a long time getting there. <laughs> we're just down here at Jumper. It's after we've had all the rains. So we're just going to go and have a look and see how green, how quickly the vegetation sort of come up on the station. So you can see down the road here, 
down here you'll still see some puddles but they're easy to get through but this was pretty much a lake uh, during the rains so here we are at rock and roll um, I've got a tire down here that's probably doesn't look that healthy a few cracks in it here and here it looks a bit down anyhow we'll see uh, we'll go for a little bit and see how it goes we've got the two spare in the back and my trusty helper is very good at uh, changing tyres. Okay, so what we've got set up here is um, he's just got a phone call. So this is this give you an idea of how effective the satellite communications is. So we're stopped, and he's just got a call from Perth, and we're 250 kilometres from Laverton, and we're about. 80 kilometres from the, or 60, 60 kilometres from, no, about 30, 30 kilometres from the homestead, so, and we've got good comms, so pretty amazing. Okay, so here we've got Bruiser, and um, with Bruiser, we uh, got it set up with a very dodgy, rigid bar. Um, we'll probably strap that down so it sits on a bit better. <laughs> And that goes around to here, and that's got a what's commonly known as a, a Murrumbidgee frog knot um, attached to it. We're going to tow Dino back to the homestead where we can fix it, and hopefully, no, I mean hopefully, uh, that tyre gets us to where we need to go. And I've got my trusty mate over here, Pom, busy talking to Perth. Um, while he should be working but I'll have a chat to him after this and just so he understands his priorities so we're currently towing uh, through a bit of a what's left of the water there so just take it nice and slow here you can see out the back there we're towing Dino so it just adds a bit of complexity to the situation but I'm sure we'll be fine. Well, well done guys. You've done a good effort. You got it home, finally. And just to make sure that you didn't know that I'd forgotten about you when I was over in Canberra. I picked up some uh, local beer from Canberra for you. Just so you can try it out. Cheers, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Going to show that, you know, when I come to the station, I make sure that I bring beer. <laughs> yes, uh, noted. Oh. Cheers. Ah, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, the fly net. The fly net. Great idea. You can still you can still drink beer um, while no flies. I love that. It makes me feel like Zorro. I th I feel like flies like me more than anybody else here, Jack. There are a lot of flies on you, aren't they? They're all over him. They know. They know. Well, thanks everyone for sticking with us. It's actually taken a little bit longer than you'd expect to get it all the way home, but we've had a few showers in between, and that's why I've got a bit of mud on the vehicles. But the guys have achieved. They did pretty well. Pom's made his guest appearance here. And so if you are liking it, make sure that you throw us a, a thumbs up and more people are going to be able to enjoy the shenanigans that we get up to around here. Oh, well, that's us enjoying a uh, Canberra beer. It's not the reason I would go back to Canberra. <laughs>